everyone, welcome to the Tech and Auto Show, which is India's only show that satisfies your hunger for both technology as well as automobiles. I'm your host Siddharth Sharma and we've got a pop show lined up for you guys this week. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, that's our lineup on the show. And first up, what we have for you is the review of the all-new AI-enabled smartphone from the house of Honor, the Honor View 10. Artificial intelligence is going to take center stage in 2018 when it comes to our smartphones. A testimony to that was the iPhone 10, 8 and 8 Plus that came out last year with A11 Bionic chip that had a neural engine that enabled AI on those devices. But all those devices were really expensive. And this year, all the Android smartphone manufacturers will be rooting for AI-enabled smartphones and they will make them affordable. The first device of 2018 that will have AI on it and will be affordable is the all-new Honor View 10. Now, when it comes to the design of the all-new Honor View 10, it looks very similar to the Honor 8 Pro that we saw last year. But this one is more glossy and also comes in a nice blue finish. The back panel on this one has a matte finish to it and the phone grips really well in your hands. One of the best features on this device is that it comes with a 5.99 inch full HD full view display, which means it is almost bezel-less and one of the biggest screen sizes that one can buy in 2018. Now this full view display also supports aspect ratio of 18 is to 9 which has been the taste of 2017. You see most of the flagship smartphones having this aspect ratio on their devices. Now when you talk about the display quality on the Honor View 10, it is one of the brightest displays to come out of the Honor's table. Now most of the Honor smartphones that we saw last year did not have that brightness quotient to them, but this one comes with a very cool, super bright display with good viewing angles and the contrast ratio that it offers on the display is also pretty neat. Now what is powering the all-new Honor View 10? Well, it comes with Huawei's own first AI-enabled processor, which is an octa-core chipset. It's called the Kirin 970 processor, which is backed by 6 GB of RAM, and on board you get 128 GB of storage. You can expand it up to 256 GB with the help of a micro SD card as well. And this processor is an AI-enabled processor by Huawei on the Honor View 10, which means it also has a built-in neural network processing unit that enables deeper learning learning and the smartphone learns your user patterns, your user behaviors as you continue using this smartphone and helps you navigate through its UI seamlessly. It is also the first smartphone by Honor that comes with Android Oreo out of the box and is also loaded with Huawei's own EMUI 8.0. Now the EMUI 8.0 bloatware on top of Android Oreo is very non-intrusive and there are no app drawers on this smartphone. Everything is right off the screen. It also comes with facial unlock features which you've seen on the iPhone 10 and the OnePlus 5T as well. So that facial unlock feature now also comes on the Honor View 10. Now the EMUI 8.0 also understands how you are using this device and allocates resources in accordance to your user pattern, which means that this smartphone will never leave you hanging. Now if you talk about the gaming experience on this device or the multitasking experience on the Honor View 10, it is just beautiful and seamless. Now just like all their Honor devices, on the Honor View 10 also you get a dual camera setup at the back. One is a 20 megapixel sensor and the other one is a 16 megapixel sensor. The 20 megapixel sensor on the Honor View 10 is a monochrome sensor that helps you click beautiful black and white images and the 16 megapixel sensor is an RGB sensor. Now both these camera modules also work in tandem to give you beautiful portrait effects and yes, AI is also enabled on the cameras of the smartphone. It also comes with 13 different types of scene and object recognition and it can also recognize whether you're clicking your dog or your cat. The front camera on the Honor View 10 is a 13 megapixel one and gives you a very good selfie experience as well. 
What it lacks in is a front facing fill flash, but then there is a screen flash option available on the Honor View 10, which will act as a fill flash if you want to click low light selfie images. It also comes with all those beauty modes and facial enhancing modes that one would require in this selfie age. Now the battery on the Honor View 10 is brilliant. It comes with a 3750 mAh battery, supports fast charging, will last you easily a day, day and a half because it also comes with smart power management and it manages all the functions of this device depending on your user pattern. And most of you might think that it's a bit of a stretch but this is also by far one of the best smart power management systems that I've seen on a device in a very long time. Now of course the Honor View 10 comes with dual SIM connectivity and both the SIM card slots on this device give you 4G VoLTE connectivity as well. They've also managed to integrate a fingerprint sensor up front on this device which was a little bit odd for us because most of the devices that you see these days come with fingerprint sensors at the back, especially the devices that sport an 18 is to 9 aspect ratio display. But they've still managed to put a nice fingerprint sensor at the bottom of this. So what do we think about the all new Honor View 10? Well, if you want one of the best quality artificial intelligence enabled smartphones in 2018 and if you want it right at the start at an affordable price tag, you really can't go wrong with the Honor View 10 over here. Time for some automotive action on the show and up next we get you the fast and the furious Volvo S60 Polestar that Manav drove on a race track. Volvo has entered the sports sedan segment in India with the S60 Polestar which besides its gorgeous looks packs in a lot of punch. To find out how good it is in reality, we've come at a racetrack and we tell you whether it's worth your money. Let's start with the name Polestar. To give you an idea, think of it as somewhat similar to Mercedes sub-brand AMG and BMW's M Division, which are known for making faster, high-performance versions of already existing models. The thing is that performance sedan game is dominated by German brands. But the Swedish have entered the war with all guns blazing. The S60 Polestar has received over 70 upgrades as compared to the regular S60. The changes on the exterior include a sportier front bumper with splitters, revised rear bumper with new exhaust and rear diffuser and there's a spoiler on top too. The front grille, outside rear view mirrors and the window panels have been blacked out to make the signature blue Polestar color stand out. There is several Polestar badging on the car as well as along with one on the exhaust pipes too, which is seriously cool. The interiors remain largely similar except the center console which now has a carbon fiber accent and there are cooler race pedals on this one. The stitching inside the cabin has been done in Polestar blue as well. Then there are the gorgeous 20 inch wheels. But given that it's a sports saloon, the focus is on the drive experience. So let's get to it. Under the hood lies a 2-litre 4-cylinder petrol engine that uses a supercharger as well as a turbocharger to deliver 367 horsepower and 470 Nm of torque. This comes mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission with steering mounted paddle shifters and an all-wheel drive system with torque vectoring for better high-speed handling. The claimed top speed is 250 km per hour, but given the technical racetrack, we couldn't go past 180 In terms of power, you can actually feel what the car is doing. The stability control is turned off. Great brakes on this one, the tires are really sticky. There's a little bit of understeer, but that's okay. There's also a launch control system on board that can catapult the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 4.7 seconds. When it comes to stopping, then it has one of the best brakes in the business. And the suspension is 80% stiffer for better high-speed cornering. Overall, Polestar manages to feel connected to the driver and even though there's a bit of an understeer, the chassis more than makes up for it. 
Simply put, it is more like a point-and-shoot camera than an overly complicated DSLR. On top of that, like a typical Volvo, it has almost every safety feature present that you can think of and includes the likes of radar-based safety features, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, park pilot assist and blind spot detection. It does have a 5-star NCAP safety rating after all. To sum it up, the car drives really well, it sticks to the ground, it goes where you point it towards to and as a whole it just gives a great driver's experience. So if you're looking for a car that you want to be driven around in, well there are other Volvos to look out for but if you want a car that you can go grocery shopping in and then decide to go on the racetrack on the weekends, then the S64 star is the one for you. And with that, it's time for us to take a very small break on the show. But you guys don't go anywhere because there's plenty more action coming your way on the other side. What is a tech show? To present technology and gadgets for public infotainment. But you've never been presented like this. What is an auto show? To explain the reason behind driving your passion. And we explain like this. Watch India's first, the tech and auto show on CNN News 18. Welcome back, you're watching the Tech and Auto Show with me, Siddharth Sharma. Now, Xiaomi is a company that's known for making budget smartphones. They've got another entry-level budget smartphone in the Indian market, which is called the Redmi 5A. And up next, Sartak Dogra gets you a review of this new smartphone. Xiaomi has literally clustered the budget smartphone segment in the Indian market with its periodic releases. One such recent release by the company is the successor to its widely popular the Redmi 4A. And as you can guess, this one is called the Redmi 5A. Redmi 5A has been launched as the entry-level smartphone by Xiaomi in India with a price tag of Rs. 499. This is thanks to an ongoing discount of Rs. 1000 on the first 5 million units of the smartphone. Afterwards, the smartphone will retail at its original price of Rs. 5999. Nevertheless, let us focus on what is it exactly that Xiaomi is offering on the smartphone. On papers, this one comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 425 processor, a 5-inch HD display, dual SIM connectivity along with a dedicated micro SD slot and a 3000 mAh battery to back all of this up. The Redmi 5A carries a very simple and neat build which is mostly made of plastic with a slight metallic finish. There's a camera at the back with an LED flash next to it, SIM and micro SD slots on the left and power key and volume rockers on the right. There's a micro USB port at the bottom while the upper edge sports a headphone jack and interestingly enough an IR blaster to control your household gadgets. The HD display on the Redmi 5A is just as good as the one on the previous model. It is bright enough and carries ample colors and contrast to cater to your video experiences. The phone runs MIUI 9 on top of Android Nougat, which tends to increase the ease of use a tad bit for the first time Android users. The Snapdragon 425 processor is also the same and can handle your daily tasks quite easily. What you will notice is a larger app loading time and even a few lags every now and then. Our advice would be to keep your smartphone usage mellow with the Redmi 5A. Xiaomi has reduced the SIM size that was previously compatible with the Redmi 4A to nano SIMs now and this makes space for a dedicated micro SD slot on the Redmi 5A. Using this, you can expand the storage to up to a good 128GB. Preloaded Microsoft apps and Xiaomi apps come in handy and there are extra functions like second space, dual apps, split screen and gesture shortcuts to further increase the ease of use. Xiaomi has also downsized the battery on the Redmi 5A to a 3000 mAh capacity. But it is still good enough and can easily take more than a day's work on it. That is also the reason why Xiaomi claims an impressive 8 day standby time on this smartphone. What the Redmi 5A misses out on is a fingerprint sensor. 
which is a sort of a necessity these days, irrespective of the price tag. There is also not enough firepower in the smartphone to cater to heavy users. Like extensive gamers might not find the smartphone very worthy. The cameras on the Redmi 5A are quite decent for a smartphone at this price, but not in general. While we like the rear camera and the images produced were decent, the not so good luminosity is noticeable and you might have to struggle to set the focus and still get a blurred setting afterwards. Also, as with all the other Xiaomi smartphones, there are no earphones offered along with the Redmi 5A. To sum it all up, if you're looking for an entry-level device that gives you a good overall performance along with easy handling and a variety of accessibility features and of course, the expandable storage with a dual SIM connectivity, you should definitely go for the Redmi 5A. On the other hand, for the heavy users and those seeking the best bang for their buck in terms of camera performance, you can skip this one. Okay, for the past two weeks on the Tech and Auto Show, we've been showcasing you a special series called the Hyundai Weekender. And up next, we get you the last and final edition of this series with me and Nikhil Chavla. Check this out. Welcome to another edition of the Hyundai Weekender but this time around we are not taking you anywhere but telling you when you plan for your weekend how you can be the better guy. I am Siddharth Sharma and joining me of course is Nikhil Chavla from the Unbiased Blog. So point number one of being a better guy is always wear a seatbelt. I mean it's like a prerequisite. If you sat in the car and you are supposed to drive, wear a seatbelt. Just don't think twice, don't think your clothes would not look nice, don't think you would look cool. I mean it's not a thing that's for safety, it's for everybody. Absolutely and uh, without any doubt seatbelt is not just for people who are sitting on the front seat Absolutely. but also if you've got your friends sitting in the rear seat. I mean all the cars these days including the one that we are driving, the next gen one, that comes with rear seat belts. Make sure that they wear seat belts too. Point number two is that whenever you go on a long weekend trip, you are usually hitting the highway and you are also hitting uh, cities and small towns in between. But the most important point is no matter how powerful a car that you are driving, you should always, always follow the speed limit. Yeah. You should never exceed it. And what a lot of people don't know, Nikhil, is that if you are following the speed limit that has been set on the Indian highways and if you are not doing regular gear shifts just to get the torque out of your car, you actually get better fuel efficiency out of it as well. If you're driving too fast, the reaction time goes really low and if somebody comes in the middle, you not you don't have enough time to brake or you don't react to it. So it's always important to follow the speed limits because the kind of roads we have, the kind of people who jump in from nowhere, yes. there is... Cattle, well, dogs, absolutely. cats, we don't know where horses, we're driving. <laughs> people, <laughs> children sometimes. So yes, you should always follow speed limit and that is... Uh, uh, very important both for your safety as well as for the safety of people around you who are also driving. Point number three, Nikhil. So the thing is when you're driving a car, you should always stay focused, your hand should always be on the steering which is very important because that's where you, the whole control is. So I've seen some people who are always fidgeting with their phones and you know you're not distracted, not looking at on the road where your eyes should always be on the road and yes. your hand should always be on the steering and it's always the other way, it's people who are trying to fidget with their phone. So the, they're trying to message. They're trying to message, they're trying to you know call What's someone, up? put smileys, change music track, a lot yeah. of things which can now be done through the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto on the new Verna. Yes. So it's very important you stay on the road, you you know look at the road and with your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can just control everything from the dial right here. I mean the prerequisite rule is that you should not message or not fidget with your phone Absolutely. while driving. But if it's very important, uh, the cars these days come loaded with that. Your eyes should always be on the road and you should always concentrate. Point number four is that you should always, always follow all the traffic rules. You know, stopping on a traffic, traffic signal yeah. is the most important thing that 
one has to do the red light is for a reason it's it's there for you to stop and also stop before the zebra crossing before the stop line always yeah. let the pedestrians go you know you really don't have to come close to them and say dekho meri gaadi kitni amazing hai type you can just like uh, you know stop uh, before the stop line you let them just pass yeah. so it's very important to look cool look responsible and also be responsible at the same time and uh, the things that we talked about in this video are very important and are in a way should be your second nature while sitting inside your car and driving it yeah. every day not just for the weekend but if you're planning a weekend these are the things that you really need to keep in mind so that's it from this week's Hyundai weekender from me and Nikhil over here uh, safe driving wear a seat belt always and follow traffic rules And it's time for us to say goodbye on this edition of the Tech and Auto Show. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to tweet us on our Twitter handles. All you tech lovers out there, you can tweet us at News18 Tech, and all you petrol heads, don't forget to tweet us at News underscore Cars18. We'll see you same time, same place next week, only on CNN News18. Tech and Auto Show.